today. I am in Alabama's largest city, Birmingham, Alabama. And I've got kind of a unique story today. I'm in the middle of the downtown area here. And today's story all revolves around the 16th Street Baptist Church. There goes a plane taking off pretty close to that tall building there it seems like from where we're standing in the early 60s the civil rights movement was running in full force in the years prior to the events of today's story birmingham alabama had garnered a national reputation as a very tense very violent racially segregated city any attempts at equal rights by African-American citizens, it was met with a violent resistance. Over just a few short years leading up to 1963, there were 21 different bombings on African-American churches or residential homes. At one point, it had gotten so bad that Birmingham's nickname was Bombingham. I know, that's horrible. Out of all of those bombings, though, out of all 21 bombings, not one person was killed, at least until September the 15th of 1963. Early in the morning, that September 15th, four KKK members planted a bomb that consisted of 15 sticks of dynamite right at the rear of the building here at the 16th Street Baptist Church. Now, presently, they have a marker on the ground where that bomb was set, and just on the other side of the wall, there would have been a staircase, and it led down into the basement. In the pictures of the aftermath, you can actually see that staircase, or what's left of it. At 10.22 a.m., an anonymous man called the church. 14-year-old Carolyn Maul answered the phone, and when she picked it up, the anonymous man on the other side just simply said, three minutes, and then he hung up. Hello? Three minutes. 30 seconds later, the bomb went off and exploded. The bomb was so powerful that it blew a hole in the back of the church, seven feet wide, and it blew a, a crater into the ground two feet deep. And it was so strong that it blew a passing motorist completely out of his car. I mean, the guy, he was just driving by, unfortunately and unluckily, right at the time the bomb went off. And he was driving down the road and the bomb exploded and the, the force, the power of it was so great it just it blew him right out of his car onto the ground somewhere between 14 and 22 people were injured in the blast at the time of the explosion there were five little girls who were down in the the basement bathroom they were changing clothes for a uh, like a church performance that they were part of four of the five girls were killed the one lone girl who survived from down in the basement said that when the bomb went off, it blew the other girls' bodies through the air like they were rag dolls. The four girls who were murdered were 14-year-old Addie Mae Collins, 11-year-old Carol McNair, 14-year-old Carol Robertson, and 14-year-old Cynthia Wesley. All four girls suffered brutal deaths during this explosion. One of the girls was decapitated. Another was mutilated so badly that they were only able to identify her because of the scraps of clothes left on her body. Once her parents saw that particular type of fabric, they knew it was their child. Another girl had a piece of mortar sticking out of her head and it the blast was so strong that it blew a chunk of the mortar from the building and it had lodged itself in her skull. Even still, with all of that horror and all of that devastation and destruction, 
when rescue workers found the remains of those girls down in the basement, they were all holding hands. Within hours after the explosion, violence erupted across Birmingham, Alabama. It was blacks versus whites. There was fighting everywhere. Fires of frustration and discord are burning in every city, north and south. Their legal remedies are not at hand. Redress is sought in the streets, in demonstrations, parades, and protests, which create tensions and threaten violence and threaten lives. We face, therefore, a moral crisis as a country and a people. We have a right to expect that the Negro community will be responsible will uphold the law, but they have a right to expect that the law will be fair, that the Constitution will be colorblind, as Justice Harlan said at the turn of the century. This is what we're talking about, and this is a matter which concerns this country and what it stands for. And in meeting it, I ask the support of all of our citizens. Thank you very much. It got so bad that even Governor George Wallace had to step in. George Wallace sent over 300 state troopers to the city to try and stop any more bloodshed from taking place. George Wallace was a very controversial figure in Alabama. He was the governor, but he also supported segregation. Even still, though, he was so appalled by this bombing that he offered up a $5,000 reward for the arrest of the bombers. But afterwards, after everything was all said and done, the newspapers and the people, they blamed George Wallace for creating the atmosphere that caused this bombing. Two years after this bombing had taken place, the FBI concluded that four KKK members, Thomas Blanton Jr., Herman Cash, Robert Chambliss, and Bobby Cherry, all four men were responsible for this bombing. But none of them were charged right away. In fact, it wasn't until 1977 when any of them were charged, and even then, it was just Robert Chambliss, and he was charged and ultimately convicted for just one of those girls' murders. It took all the way until 2001 before all of the girls got any kind of justice. And in 2001, both Thomas Blanton Jr. and Bobby Cherry were both sentenced to life in prison. Robert Chambliss, you know, he was, like I just said, he was convicted in 77 and sent to prison for life. And then Herman Cash had passed away years prior, so he couldn't be sentenced. So by 2001, all three men who were still alive were serving life sentences for this bombing. The 16th Street Baptist Church, they rebuilt this church. And while they were doing so, they built a park across the street directly across from the 16th Street Baptist Church. They have erected a, uh, what they call the Birmingham Civil Rights Heritage Trail. And they've built this, an, an entire park with statues and monuments and placards with dates and historical events that took place during the Civil Rights Movement. This one right here is uh, the placard for the church. It says, on September 15, 1963, a dynamite blast ripped through the 16th Street Baptist Church, killing four little girls. Over the next three decades, three Ku Klux Klansmen were convicted of the murders and sentenced to life in prison. In fact, if you're standing opposite from the 16th Street Baptist Church and you enter this park, this very first monument is supposed to be a monument of those four girls who were killed during that bombing. It's supposed to be all four of them right here. They're bronzed and one of them's releasing doves into the air. Dead smack dab in the middle. Here is the monument to Martin Luther King Jr. kind of neat here and like walk through the, an entrance way and then oh the water cannons I see that's what this is supposed to be the water cannons Bull Connor ordered 
the fearless child crusaders to be blasted with high pressure fire hoses and he once again loosed the dogs on the young children when the media finally exposed the nation to the cruel scene president john f kennedy attempted to interfere but a defiant connor continued to brutalize and imprison indiscriminately it's an interesting monument here I ain't afraid of your jail with a boy and a girl standing there up here it says segregation is a sin and then this is a bar so I'm thinking you're maybe you're supposed to look at it from this way so the kids are behind bars I guess and th this is all part of the child crusades meaning uh, those children but uh, there was a demonstration where a thousand kids skipped school and they all came down to the 16th street church there to hold a demonstration and this is supposed to represent them sticking the dogs on those kids and lastly this building here in front of us uh this is about a block away from the park and about two blocks from the 16th street baptist church and this used to be one of, of only a very few like blacks only buildings and this was used for like music and stuff like that they came in to play jazz music here and those type things and if you look on the building it still denotes that to this day that is going to do it for this video here today in birmingham alabama on the 16th street baptist church bombing i want to thank you all so much for watching i really appreciate it if you're new here, go down, hit that subscribe button, then hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you want to help support the channel, you can check out the links in the description box below. Thank you all. I will see you again tomorrow. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Much love to you all.